25th of August. We got an elk right there. Heard an elk last night, once or twice, and we were discussing, I was discussing with uh, uh, Caleb and Cougar Bait, the other sounds we heard in the night, whether it was wolf or coyote, we're not sure. There's a difference, but uh, we couldn't tell. Uh, uh, staying at the hiker biker uh, camp sites at Grant Village, uh, which was which was fine, and uh, had a nice meal, an okay meal. It wasn't a nice meal. It was an okay meal. It was a restaurant meal. Which puts it in a completely different category of hiker food uh, at the uh, concession at Grant's Village. I'm going to go off and get some breakfast this morning. Maybe breakfast will be better. Yellowstone Lake. Right in the middle of the park. From Grant Village. I don't know that I've ever been to Grant Village before. In the three or four times I've been in, into the park. Uh, yeah. Huge caldera in the middle of the park here. And uh, this part is filled in with Yellowstone Lake. Very beautiful. Now on a different lake. This is Shoshone Lake. Uh, it's just about 10 a.m. Got five miles, five miles in, and we didn't get going from uh, the ranger station at Grant Village until after 8 a.m. So, you know, I was making, well, more than two and a half miles an hour on that very cruisy stretch. Anyway, Shoshone Lake. I'm going to be crossing the outlet right there, right there, and uh, this lake is going to be the major feature for the day. Uh, I do go up into the hills a little bit over there, but then it comes back down uh, on another arm of Shoshone that we're not even seeing here. Uh, supposed to be some bog that's just absolutely unavoidable. So my strategy for that today is just to wear some socks uh, that sort of do better when my feet are wet all the time. And I'm pretty sure very shortly here I'm going to have to stop, take off my shoes, uh, take out my orthotic inserts because they they sort of slop around uh, when uh, the shoes are just saturated and they will actually slide up so that the arch is hitting me in the complete wrong spot the heel cup is digging into my heel the you know the, the back end of it um, I do want to address a couple things because uh, some friends have have said uh, a couple things uh, you know, concerns about me. Uh, one of them uh, was phrased as my fatigue issue. Uh, that's a non-issue. Uh, it really was an appetite issue in in central uh, uh, Colorado, um, where I could not eat more than just a little bit, and that was unsustainable. Uh, I don't know what caused that. Is is the short answer, but it's not a problem now. I can pack down, you know, 1,000 calories, 2,000 calories, no problem. <laughs> and I need to be able to do that in order to, you know, keep the weight on uh, to be able to keep hiking. 
Second one is uh, shin splints. Uh, as most of you are aware, many of you are aware, I had shin splints the day that I started in the, in the New Mexico boot heel. I, I actually got them earlier this year on the Appalachian Trail when I was, you know, trying to get in shape for the, for the CDT. Uh, I still have shin splints. They hurt every day. Uh, they hurt a whole lot when I was in uh, southern Wyoming. They, they hurt as bad as they ever have this year. Uh, and I, I attribute that to the road walking that we were doing. Uh, the worst, of course, is highway miles, but even walking on a dirt road that's flat and sort of the similar pounding, pounding, pounding uh, is pretty bad. Um, the up and down of the Wind River Range and the mountains since then has helped such that uh, for the past four or five days, I have not taken any ibuprofen or naproxen, any NSAIDs at all to relieve the pain. I just, you know, it's, it's sort of a nuisance pain at this point. Um, they'll probably hurt again if I have extended road walks. It's just one of those things. But there really has only been one day where I could say I was, did not have shin splint pain, and that was the day of the 134 river crossings in the Gila River where my shins were bathed in ice cold water pretty much all day long. Who knows, maybe a similar thing is going to happen today in the bogs. Not really looking forward to that, but you know, it's the CDT. Hope you're having a great day. What is this, a hackberry? Yeah. We've been seeing just dozens and hundreds of these. And this is, this is on cougar bait. <laughs> yeah, maybe you got some salt or something like yeah, that. That's, probably. yeah, that's cool. That's nice. A little bit of nature right there. <laughs> that little sliver over there is Shoshone Lake. Oh, oh that was deeper than I thought it was going to be. And this is the CDT. <laughs> Not what you had in mind when you signed up for the Continental Divide Trail. Ooh, I'm just feeling the mud ooze between my toes. Ooh, I liked that when I was a kid. I don't like it quite so much anymore. There's some sort of thermal feature over there. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this log is. Decoration, let's say. Isn't that pretty? And into an area of a lot of thermal activity, a lot of them. I don't want you uh, getting off the trail, so I'll, yeah, stay on the trail. Don't want to fall through. So just as uh, we were getting sort of set up here, 
That is just a massive thunderhead. And we're hearing lots of thunder from it. Uh, no, I don't want that. Today was too good. No, no. No. Yep. And this is coming our way. We can tell from the way the wind is blowing. Oh. 